I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Central America. Today we have a different viewer question than we normally get, and this one is about whether or not it should be starting a new business of opening a restaurant in the capital city of San Jose, Costa Rica. Let's get to his question right after the bump. All right, let's lead right off by reading today's question. This one's a little bit different than what we normally get. Hello, sir. My reflection from vacationing in San Jose, Costa Rica, is that it offers beautiful scenery, lots of tourism, mostly Americans, and very mediocre food for U.S. level prices. I felt I was dining university cafeteria level food, not worth the money. I was thinking I could open a restaurant in San Jose. I'm thinking of mall food court where lots of tourists come. Not fancy fine dining, but $22 to $30 price range per dinner. My parents have owned a restaurant before, so I'm not out of touch with reality in the business. What do you think, sir? My aim is target toward, to target towards tourists so I can make U.S. level income if restaurant is to turn into a success. I think this should work if tourists are coming all year round. Where do you think I have a higher chance of success in Costa Rica or Panama? Thank you in advance. So let's preface a few things here before I get into this. So uh, I am a restaurateur in Central America. I have worked in the space for a number of years, and I have some background in restaurants uh, from <laughs> as far back as the 1990s. Uh, so I am a little bit familiar with the space, and I work in Central America. So, okay, that I have going for me. As far as opening a new business in Costa Rica, especially in San Jose, well, there's going to be a bit I don't know. So let's just be aware I'm not the expert on this, but this may be informative. Okay, so first of all, as a general rule, if you are not from a country and you're looking at opening a business in that country, your chances of success are extremely low. You are the same as I often give recommendations here in Nicaragua, maybe slightly less of an extreme situation, but opening a restaurant in Costa Rica, unless you have something extremely special to offer, is going to be an uphill battle because everyone who's in Costa Rica today, especially all the expats, think that opening a restaurant is the obvious thing that they want to do. So that is always a saturated market. And if you are competing against people who've been there for a long time as expats, that'll be a big challenge. And if you're competing against Costa Ricans, who are going to want to open businesses of their own, they have a massive advantage over you. They have an advantage in the legal system. They have an advantage in the tax system. They have an advantage in the banking system. They have a massive advantage in their knowledge of the market and understanding prices and those kinds of things. Tourists who are going to Costa Rica do not want to spend U.S. prices. So that is that is something you have to be aware of, right? There's a lot of things here. People from the United States and Canada are going to Costa Rica because they're told it's cheap, and the majority of them are not hanging out at the mall. I do know that the malls are full of tourists. That is true. But San Jose isn't the major tourist center of the country. It is a place that a lot of people, like those of us coming from Nicaragua, go to. But we're going there for food choices and such, which my finding in San Jose is that there's a lot of good choices for restaurants. I think you may be finding that as someone who is vacationing, that you don't have a good read on the market. Um, Costa Rica has some really exceptional dining at, yes, very high prices for Central America, but quite low prices for the United States. When I'm in Costa Rica, I'm able to dine much better than I can in the U.S. at a about half the price, much, much lower. Like if I'm going to take my family to Denny's in the United States, I can go out for less in Costa Rica to fancy restaurants, same family, and eat quite well. And yes, it's many times the price of being here in Nicaragua, but it's a lot less than being in the United States. If you're looking at going into a food court, you're going to be competing against everyone who's already paying rent, people who are already in there, people who've established a name. And there are some really big chains that are backed in uh, Costa Rica. So you may have a lot of market pressure to make that very difficult. You just have a lot of market conditions to potentially be fighting against. So is it possible? So Restaurants are a very difficult thing under the best of conditions. Anytime you're going to be opening a new restaurant, you need to make sure you have one of a few things that give you an advantage. Either you know the market when no one else does, you have funding when no one else does, you have unique real estate that you already have control of or are able to get that other people don't have, that you offer a food or service that other people don't. Simply coming in to especially a market like Costa Rica and saying you're going to just offer lower prices on 
We don't know what kind of food, but we'll assume something that does exist in Costa Rica because they have basically everything. You're going to be fighting an uphill battle because everyone else is going to be charging more and it's going to be easier for them to pay their rent. Yes, you may end up busy, but how are you going to pay your workers and your rent? If prices are similar to the U.S., that means your labor needs to be paid similar to the U.S. So quick rules being violated here, moving into a new market, just doing a restaurant in general without those really spe special uh, factors, those things mean you're at a massive uphill challenge. The third thing is you're interested in making US level income. Now that's never going to happen in another country, ever. Just never gonna happen, right? That is a pipe dream every American, every Canadian dreams of making the kind of money that they would make uh, back home in a new country where everyone else earns much less. And so that means whatever idea you're using, if you're coming in and making an investment in Costa Rica, that same investment in the US or Canada should have made you more. Those are markets where it's easier for you to make more money. Anything you're going to do in Costa Rica is going to make you less. Not because Costa Rica can't make that money, but because the market is smaller, because the market is more demanding, and because you have less to offer that market. And so you're always going to be at a disadvantage compared to your home market. So you, you don't go into this for the purpose of being a brilliant investment. Some people early on, when it was a undeveloped market, said, oh, you know, people are going to be coming here someday, and they put up money early so that someday they would have uh, a long-term investment that paid out. And that has happened a long time ago. Now it's an oversaturated market. There are so many restaurants, so much tourism that they're looking at how they're going to deal with that in the future. Like this is a market that is just so over the top bubble that you may be um, far after the point that you could possibly reasonably be opening restaurants. I don't want to rain on your parade, but the reality is most business ideas are bad, about 99%. So you need to come up with a lot of ideas before you have a reasonable chance of coming up with a good one. Restaurants are one that just in general are extremely poor. And your parents, that experience, you should be aware that restaurants don't generally make a lot of money and it's very hard to know what you're doing. And when you do know those things, what applies in one market won't apply in another. So it's very, very difficult. Now, if you're, you know, taking over an established restaurant, they, they, you know, you really know the numbers, then yeah, maybe. But if you're not working it yourself, why would no one in their right mind would sell you a successful restaurant unless you had something to offer that would make it make a lot more money than they can make operating it themselves, having already been there and having a lot of experience. Anyone who's looking to sell you a spot, they're selling it to you because they already failed. So, for example, if you've got a spot in the mall that you're going to get, that went out of business from some company that's established that got a business in there and wasn't able to make it. If you're thinking that they price themselves too low, are you looking at pricing yourselves higher than that? If so, are you really cheaper than the market? Is that really your draw? If you're going to price lower than they were, if they weren't able to uh, pay their bills with higher margins, will you be able to? And how how will you get margins as good as the existing companies? Because they have almost certainly established Costa Rican contacts, probably Costa Rican investors. They're in a position where they're already keeping the prices down. You will be coming in at the highest price point. Anyone who looks at a vacation business and isn't tied to that market already has this massive problem of the local businesses have this really good uh, uh, workflow, right? They have, they have cost of business, they have suppliers, often they have family connections. This is true even in the US and Canada, but in Central America, it's so much more true. And you, you know, we operate restaurants here in Nicaragua and it takes years to come up with supply chains that are going to make them viable. For a long time, you're fighting to even get access to the vendors and chances are you're always paying at least a little bit higher prices than the the, uh, businesses owned by Nicaraguans. That means we're fighting an uphill battle. Not only are we struggling to make as much money as a Nicaraguan would opening one of those restaurants, but we're we're lucky to even stay in business. And we're only able to do so because we're able to finance it from the United States. We don't need to make money. If you're looking at doing this as income, it honestly doesn't make the slightest bit of sense. You really never, from a business perspective, and I know there's exceptions, but they are extremely rare. I mean, it's everybody who vacations in a new country goes there and says, wow, wouldn't it be a dream to open a business and service tourists? Everybody, this is a standard thing. Every week, so we can tell you ahead of time that every tourist we meet here in Nicaragua is going to say, you know what? I think I have this unique idea. I'm gonna open a bar on the beach. Literally everybody says it. I don't know the last time I met someone who didn't say that. And it's like, you do realize 
every single person who's on vacation here, who visits here, who moves here has all said the same thing. And tons of them have done it. Where do you see them? They're not here because they all went out of business. They all lost their, their shirts. Their businesses went under. Other people came in, took them over. And, you know, generations of failed businesses have been here and gone because it's what every every tourist thinks is it would be a dream to work inside their resort fantasy. Or in this case, San Jose, it's a little bit different than a resort fantasy, but it's the same basic thing. Everybody wants to run a business like a restaurant in that city. It's saturated. You're, you're fighting an uphill battle. It goes against every business rule of thumb, every general thing that says, how would you list things that you should do for a business, right? Make sure you are the master of the market. Don't go into a market where you're not the expert. Definitely don't go into one where you're completely the person who knows nothing about it and everyone else does, right? Never go into a market that's outside your home market unless you absolutely have to, unless you have a unique product that can only be done there. Never work in low cost markets unless you're doing arbitrage. Never go into tourism markets where you're the tourist. Uh, always have a unique offering. Uh, always be prepared that either you have to have a super unique offering, such as massive investment that no one else can get, or you're going to be the one that is working uh, the thing. Never expect to get uh, U.S. level incomes from a non-U.S. level market, right? And that could go for anything, right? You just you can't go to a lower market and expect to make the income of a higher market because if you could. Every Costa Rican would be running restaurants. Trust me, there's so many Costa Ricans. They all have access to investment capital. If there was a real market for this, right? And I say this about Nicaragua, but it's true about Costa Rica. If a Costa Rican had the market knowledge to open a restaurant like this and compete in that market because there was a gap, they would raise the money for that just like that. And if they couldn't raise it in Costa Rica, I know they can raise it in Nicaragua, right? There are investors in Nicaragua who will cover that today. And Costa Ricans with all that knowledge, all that advantage over you will open those restaurants immediately and you'll have no chance to compete. And they would have done it already if they believed that that was there. So that the people in the local market don't believe that that is a possibility, right? You're not coming up with a new idea. You're doing a tried and true and just trying to tune something that every single restaurant considers that they're not pricing that way indicates that that is not a viable price. Either it's not going to make maximum profits, it's not going to be able to be sustainable, whatever. It's not going to be able to meet your margins. So without knowing really detailed specifics of the Costa Rican market, I can tell you that the thought process, unfortunately, goes against all the things you would evaluate for a good business plan. It's just not there's no reasonable chance that it's going to work. Could you, in theory, come up with a restaurant plan where you offered good enough food, good enough prices, you worked it yourself, put in a ton of work, and made profits? Yes, that could happen. Is there any reasonable possibility that you could do that and earn as much as you could in your home market of Canada or even approach making what you could make in the United States market? No, there is no reasonable possibility of that whatsoever because if you did the exact same thing in those markets, you should make significantly more because there simply is significant more to make and you have much more to bring to the table than you do in Costa Rica. So there's, there's no, mathematically it is impossible for any, except for massive flukes, there's no way for statistically there to be successful businesses done in this way where you're defining success by meeting or beating the equivalent investment in your home market. And that's why we generally encourage people not to do it unless your goal is to simply give back to the market. You're willing to make less because you want to employ Costa Ricans. You're willing to make less because you just want to work and make less money in Costa Rica. Oh, that's fine. Absolutely. You're creating a job for yourself. Will Costa Rica let you do that? That's actually a, a legal thing you have to ask, but they probably will. I don't think that there's a, a constraint against that. But it is not... Uh, a, a unique offering. It's not a special offering and it probably doesn't make financial sense. And your final goal of earning not just a, a, an amount for a successful Costa Rican restaurant, but earning a level that only American restaurants would be able to make and only a successful in the U.S. is just not viable. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. I ask your questions below. I can go into more detail on this. If you have more detail to add, absolutely, let's talk about it. But um, unless you have, unless the key parts are missing, you might be able to pull it off, but the chances are so low. And to do what your goals are, I don't think are even within the realm of possibility. So uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, I will see all of you tomorrow. And if you could, there's videos on the screen. Just click on one. That'd be great.